Coming up on episode 85 of Podcast PD, we tackle the topic of connecting with students during remote learning. We share what's worked and what hasn't so we can all grow during this interesting time in education. Let's start the show. This is Podcast PD, the show that provides you with anytime, anywhere professional development. Our conversations and guests will provide you with the learning you might get in a faculty meeting or on a PD day. Except you're going to have more fun with AJ Bianco, Stacey Lindis, and me, Chris Nessie. Let's start the show. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. As always, we don't care when you listen, we're just happy that you do listen. Welcome to episode 85 of Podcast PD, your anytime, anywhere professional development podcast. It's Sunday night, it's 8.30, but that doesn't matter to you because you're listening to the podcast side of it. Or maybe it is important because you're watching us on YouTube right now at podcastpd.com slash live. But either way, I'm still Chris Nessie. I'm at Mr. Nessie on Twitter, and I host the House of EdTech podcast. And it's not Sunday unless I'm with my podcast compadres, Stacey Lindis and AJ Bianco. Stacey, how are you? I'm doing all right. I'm getting over a little bit of a cold. Allergy season is uh, upon us in this great state where things are slowly um, falling from the trees and landing on the ground and creating all kinds of um, chaotic seasonal, um, yeah, craziness. It's just, it's been crazy. And, it, you know, it's not, in normal times, it's not good to go to school, not feeling well. And in these Uncertain times, it's even worse. Um, but I'm chugging through, medicating, drinking lots of tea, and trying to get lots and lots of rest. But other than that, things are good. How about you? Uh, I feel healthy, you know. Good. That's always good. <laughs> healthy is always I good. I feel healthy is really good now. <laughs> um, you know, uh, I, I built a – last week, I don't know. Well, we didn't record last week, but uh, I put in a – built-in fire pit in the backyard of EdTech. Cool. And uh, last night we did our first fire. So we had, you know, s'mores and Miles stayed outside with me. He's Miles is my eight-year-old and uh, he stayed out with me and, you know, we watched the fire dwindle down in the dark and, you know, then we hosed it down and it was just really cool to, you know, be out there and see the twinklings and eat s'mores and mostly about eating s'mores. <laughs> um but life is good. Life is good. What about you, AJ? Yeah, life life is good. Everything is going well on this end. Um, feeling good. F feeling good. I mean, that's really about it. Family's good. I mean, what else are we going to say? It's Sunday night. And we're recording. Um, here we go. Like, I don't really have much going on. Think things are. Uh, <laughs> think things are on the up and up. It, it's better than the down and down, right? That is true. That is true. <laughs> Don't know what that means, but <laughs> I've never heard that either. <laughs> Everything has Couldn't an opposite, that. right? Couldn't let that slide. It's on the, okay, let it slide. That I think that's the problem with most of my life is people have just let me slide. <laughs> I thought he said he was living his best life. I Anyways, best life. so my I'm, allergies are affecting my voice and my ears. There you go. And if uh, I well, cough, Chris, I'm sorry. I hope you can edit most of it out. Try to cough when nobody's talking so I can't edit it out. Or I'll because mute myself. Right now, you like, <laughs> I'll mute myself. You could use the yeah, mute button. Go. I think it'll be all right. There's, use the mute button. There you go. Ah, oh, she looks fantastic. <laughs> um, speaking of fantastic, what's up to Stephanie and David hanging out in the chat room over at podcastpd.com slash live. Hey. If you're checking us out on Periscope, come on over to podcastpd.com slash live. Or again, wherever you're watching, leave a message, say hello participate in the conversation because we are here for you. The only other thing that I'll add in that's uh that's new with me is I got back behind the microphone. No, not to host my podcast. Derek Larson is still doing that until December, which shameless plug episode 165 came out today. He's doing uh, a great job, Chris. He is doing a great job. I, I'm very very excited and proud of our boy Derek Larson. So props to Derek. I but hope I, Derek realizes said, that 
Go ahead. I, I know, I know, I know. I know you're going to say, but, but I, I, I hope Derek realizes that you're going to like sign him to a contract here for podcast. <laughs> I was going to say he, he, he realizes this is the podcast. interview. No, this is this is like step one. Like this is what happened to us. We did one thing, and all of a sudden, <laughs> hey, now we're on a podcast every other Sunday night. <laughs> hey, oh my God, now we're alive. Yeah, so, live. Derek, Derek, dude, like, <laughs> good luck. I hope you realize what you did here, my man. Uh, you guys are funny. Yeah, it's not, it's not a lie. Don't say it's a lie. Like you know, you're writing writing down things here. Well, Probably I, the notebook. I, Sale pitch to Derek. Well, you, EPN available. Here's your logo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I told him this is like. The backdoor training for the podcast that he's been talking about yes. launching for as long as I've known him. So, oh my god, it can be called Life in the Library with Derek Larson. We are talking about what this podcast is going to be. That I, I just like the alliteration. January, yes, yes. Life in the so library. Life in the library. Uh, but anyway, so uh, I'm back behind the mic because uh, I am now the voice of the zebras. The zebras are my high school mascot, New Brunswick High School. And uh, last winter, I was the voice of uh, boys basketball, and I got the call from the athletic director. We need an announcer. Got yeah, backed out because no. of COVID issues. Oh. So <laughs> I was I was in the I was in the press box all by myself. On give us give us a little something. I hope he didn't sound like that because now he's muted. I was gonna say I can't hear you. You're getting paid for that. <laughs> That's why they chose Chris. Chris. Nope, can't hear you. There's no sound coming out of your microphone. Nope, you got nothing. Chris. Test one, test one. We see your mouth moving, but I don't hear a sound. Nope. It, it always makes you wonder if he's playing with us when he does that. I know. Like when he does that whole dynamic and um, whatever, whatever. answer mic. Oh yeah, yeah, right. He's like whatever like, that trick. He's like, really like, good at it. Testing, testing. Hey, there you back. are. Hello, Hi. Hello. So give us a little taste Perfect. of what, what it sounded like on the uh, on the uh, right, football. So here. I was uh, back behind the, the microphone. Here's, here's the situation. We heard that. We heard all that. We know. Oh, here's the situation. Okay. You got third down and goal. Down by, we'll go four because the field goes too easy. Down by four. Zebras have the ball. Let's do it. Fourth well, quarter. I'm not doing play by play. I'm the public address announcer. Oh, what does nice. that mean? That means I go. Raffle like this. tickets are for sale, everybody. Grab your raffle <laughs> ticket for the 50 50. That's Chris. <laughs> no, no, no. It would sound something like this Pass complete to Jones. Five yard gain. Second down. Ball on the 35. Fly ball. Caught. Come on, man. Give me a little energy here. Let's go. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. This is why I don't like sports. It's no, I'm not doing play by play. I'm not on TV. I'm not on YouTube. I'm not on the radio. Sorry. It's very in the stadium. Got it. I had a virtual marching band. Hmm? How about that? That's pretty good. That's pretty Marching bands are canceled all over the country. Not in my press box. There you go. All over the country because I still think they're going on in my boys' district. Just want to put that out there. We're. Oh yeah, it's a little it's a little wonky down here. Well, there they, yes. Well, I had a virtual marching band which I set up as this. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. Please direct your attention to your imagination for a performance <laughs> from our virtual marching band. And then I played like five marching band pieces of popular music and it was great. I have fun when I'm in the booth. That's oh my good. goodness. Did there are no you like in the stands, are there? Uh, there were, we had a capacity crowd of 500 people socially distanced. That's a lot of people. A lot of people. The stadium holds like 3,000. I don't care. That's yeah. still too many people. I went to lunch today with like 30 and I was like, this is a lot of people. I was by myself in the press box. So I was safe. So wait, when you there. direct them to use their imaginations for this marching bad, like I'm thinking of like um, the Nick Cannon movie, right? Like drum line. Yes. Oh, it's yes. I, it's like one of my I, I, favorite like marching band movies. I know movie. it's not just about that, but it's a good movie. It's a great I, movie. I need to get some of their soundtrack to add you to uh, my repertoire. Yeah. But you need some of the more current pieces. beats that people use. Yeah. 
I do. I, I, I got, I got a lot of contemporary music. So cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dan right. Krinus, Dr. Dan in the crowd tonight. What's up podcast people. Uh, and I'm sure he just heard me talk about there being upwards of 500 people in the stands. That makes me nervous. I don't know, on the field. Yeah, it's just a lot of people. And then no, all that but, contact because it's football. Yeah, that's a different situation well, by itself. That's a whole different that, thing. That's all that's all coming down the down the pike too. So yeah. Enjoy it while you can, people. Enjoy it while you can. That's why we can't have nice things. <laughs> stupid COVID. Taylor Swift said it years COVID. ago. <laughs> so we're about to embark on a three part series. This is episode eighty five. And we came up with this grand funk master flex plan to do three episodes about virtual learning. And tonight we're going to talk about connecting with students and what that looks like. I am a high school teacher. Stacy's an elementary school teacher. AJ used to be a teacher. So we have things we can talk about, about connecting with students and things that we've seen. And I'd like to think we're going to get pretty real, real talk. And... I'm, I'm prepared to talk about things that I have tried, things that have worked, things that haven't worked, etc. Uh, in episode 86, we're going to talk about what it's like now in virtual learning times to connect with families. Okay, As if connecting with families wasn't challenging enough for a teacher, now we've got all this other stuff to worry about. And then in episode 87, we're going to talk about connecting with colleagues when you are hybrid or remote and there is that lost element. I mean... People say we teach on islands as it is. So let's talk about how we're going to connect with our colleagues during all of this, again, crazy times. If you want to get us your thoughts in advance on any of these topics, you know, you can uh, email us at feedback at podcastpd.com, or you can send us a voice message by going to podcastpd.com slash feedback. And if you want to come out and watch us live, we'll be here on Sunday, October 18th and Sunday, November 1st. Talking about those topics, podcastpd.com, bleh, 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 podcastpd.com slash live is where you can join us for that. All right. Let's talk about connecting with students. AJ, take us back to a happier time when we were in classrooms. We can see our students. What did it look like in Mr. Bianco's classroom to connect with kids? What were things you did that let you build rapport with the youngsters. I, I, I don't really know if there was like one thing that I, that I did. I think it was just a whole bunch of different things that, that we did. I think, you know, and, and I think we're, when we talk about this, unless you're a new teacher, I think we're preaching to the choir here. It's just the fact that getting to know the students, sharing my personal journey, things I like, things I do, who I am. I think that was allowing me to, to show the students that I'm an actual person and rather than just an educator, just their teacher. Um, I really just believed in a lot of group work and a lot of team building activities in, in the classroom. And we did things like, you know, just, just, you know, I didn't create any of this stuff obviously, but just like cup stacking or, you know, card stacking, making a, 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 a house of cards out of a certain amount of cards so you can get it to stand up, you know, and it was just all that conversation and it took place. And I love to just be around the room. You know, I think what made my classroom different and not patting myself on the back or anything like that, or saying I was a lazy teacher, but I really didn't teach very much. I kind of gave them the information and then allowed them to have those conversations, which allowed me to move around the room and, and kind of see what they were up to. You know, there wasn't a time where I was standing in front of the room where I didn't know what students were doing. You know, I would teach from the front. I would teach from the back. I would teach from the side. I would teach sitting next to the kid at the desk who was asking the question. So, you know, I think just kind of showing the different styles of what I would do really kind of opened me up to a lot of uh, comfortable conversations in the classroom. I guess we can say that, you know, I didn't I didn't really I didn't really talk down to kids. You know, I, I treated them even though they were young adults. I treated them like they were upper grade level. Um I didn't treat them like babies. And I think that really went a long way, to be honest with you. I I agree with a lot of that. And, and I, I do a lot of that myself. You know, I, I've always treated my students, whether it was middle school or high school, college, they're human beings. You know, I, I afford them all the respect I can give another human being. And, you know, it, it's theirs to lose. And I can count on almost 
no fingers, kids who have lost my respect, you know, because they're young and our classrooms need to be a place where we can give them that safety net to learn and, you know, make mistakes. And it's got to be a safe place. And, and that's part of, you know, building that culture with your students. You know, again, I, I do what you do, AJ. I, I'm a human being. You know, I, I talk about my family. I, it's not just Mr. Nessie, the teacher. You know, I let them know who I am as a person, you know, whether it's sports or just getting involved, you know, in the school community, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's, it's always been important to me to feel connected to that community. It's just that, you know, it's all been thrown on its head now. Um, Stacy, what about you? You, I think you one of the, have that elementary perspective. Yeah. I think one of the things that, um, I really try to do is just show them that I care, you know, um, I had, I have so much experience at the lower elementary level. It's kind of interesting to be up in fifth grade where like their attitudes towards school are changing a little bit, mm-hmm. but they're still in that weird, um, you know, pseudo middle school world where like they're too cool for school. And I think sometimes you just have to bring it back and like let them know that it's okay to be goofy. Um, that even in middle school, that they're going to get to be goofy depending on who their teachers are. And let like the expectation isn't that they are young, young adults, like they're 10 and, you know, just, you know, being there, listening to them, um, you know, I, I always joke that I'm a perpetual 13 year old. So, me, you know, as tall as a 13 year old. <laughs> true story. I am like, true story. No. True story. <laughs> and I stopped growing at 13. Um, <laughs> so sad, but I'm um, just, you know, being into the things that they're into. I think my, my own children, my boys help keep me young and help keep me in their world and just being able to connect with them on a very um, real, um, a real and from, from a real place, whether it's the things that the, the, the movies that they like to watch or the books that they like to read, you know, I find that one thing and I connect with them that way. I think, um, you know, one of the challenges is that with me being in the classroom, it is very different connecting with them this year than it has been connecting with them in the past. A small tangent, Stacy. You mentioned being interested in the things that students are interested in. Yeah. Have you guys heard of this new game called Among Us? Mm-mm. Mm, it sounds. Is it like a creepy thing? Like a. Maybe at first glance, it's it's it actually seems pretty interesting. Where and I only know this because my kids again. I have ninth graders. They started in the Google Meet sharing their Among Us join codes. So I'm like, all right, what is this? So I had to you know look it up. And then I was like, oh, this looks interesting. I'm going to join. They're like, what? And they think I might be good at this game. But anyway, the game is you kind of work in a cooperative setting with these little characters. They kind of look like the ghost from Mm Pac-Man. But you're trying to escape a room, as I understand it. But one of the people in the game with you is trying to kill everybody else. So you're trying to out and figure out who's the murderer, basically, while you're trying to escape this room. It's available on iOS, Android, Steam. <laughs> um, it's free to play. You can do in-app upgrades. But yeah, I think those are the that- types of things I can't do with my kids because of their ages, right? So like we have to connect on a very um, surface, non-digital place. I'm not playing the game. I was just asking if you heard them talk about it because I know you probably make time in these virtual settings to like let them speak. I don't know if anybody yeah. was talking about Among Us. No. I've never heard of that before. Some I'll probably have to look out for, I guess. Just thought I would throw that out there. Yeah. It sounds interesting, though. I mean, it sounds like it a, does a, sound interesting. And you get them talking, I guess, right? And that's it, you know, cartoon shows, movies, comic books. Like being into comic books really gets me in with like the boys, or at least comic book movies, because I don't read the books. Let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so what was that show in Bart for the comic books? Like uh, the actual questions. I miss that. <laughs> Adam, tell me exactly why <laughs> this. You get like a. Why doc- did Bruce Banner. A doctoral <laughs> level thesis on like. Uh, so it was, yes, he's amazing. 
We love you, Adam. Yeah, so that's what it looked like, I guess, connecting under normal circumstances. What does it look like um, now? Well, or what did it look like in the spring, really? Because I feel like now is different than what it looked like in the spring. In the spring? Yeah. For me, nothing. Again, I, I, you, you know, I was using StreamYard to live stream, and I had next to no attendance. And it was cobbled together you know i remember talking in the spring about basically giving my students the opportunity to journal and document their quarantine experience by creating a blog a youtube channel or an audio podcast and i had a handful of 135 kids do that in some form or another but so many of my other students they were gone never heard from them never saw them so there was no connection to be had because it was one-sided. I would get on to StreamYard, share the stream into our Google Classroom, and I would talk. I would present my screen. I would talk about the historical content to nobody. Oh my God. I was live streaming to nobody. And occasionally I'd get one or two people who would check it out for a couple of minutes and you know they would bounce. They would never come on. And it was disheartening. It was discouraging. There were a couple times where I got on there and I was on for 10 or 15 minutes and I was like, and I just quickly, you know, wrapped it up because I was like, there's no point. Yeah. They weren't doing anything. What were the expectations from your school? As far as what you create, what you did for kids and students participation and or attendance. I, I don't really have a clear answer as to what the expectations were. I mean, I mean, we were like, taking attendance and i mean i i've got there are kids you know in my school that you know they filled classes based on attendance so right. they didn't have the seat time that i'm putting in air quotes to pass the class if they had an a but they didn't attend for three months <clears throat> sorry you're retaking the class really um, even if they did the work yeah because they didn't record seat time which again that's something people measure and we've talked about how that's not exactly a, a, a good metric for it's still the wrong end of the learner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, d just to wrap up my, my spring, it just really discouraging. Now, if you ask me again, I'm a teacher at many levels. So doing right. this whole remote thing at Rutgers, those, my college students, as you would expect, they jumped on board, attending the live streams, still engaged, participating in, you know, the YouTube chat coming on screen and I was able to flip the switch from once a week in the class professor to once a week online, still getting engagement. And right. there wasn't much of a difference other than, you know, I couldn't do the go out to stuff your face at the end of the semester. Right. That, you know, with, with like those students. Yeah. Like I would. So the learning was there and I was able to replicate the in-person experience as best as I could. Right. But it was helped by getting them to participate. See, and for us, I mean, like you, the expectations, the, it was definitely there that we focused more on the social emotional well-being of our students. Um, and we were at a different vantage point in the spring than I think any teacher is now in the fall because we knew our kids for that amount of time, right? Like you knew your kids up until March 13th or March 16th or whenever school ended for you, you had that foundation built with your, with your students. And I think for me, that was so helpful, but it also like created a level of stress in me knowing that like some of my kids were going to have zero contact with others outside of, of what I provided for them. So I made sure that I provided for them various opportunities throughout every single day of the week. So like on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we would have morning meeting and then we would have question and answer for the day's assignment. And then <clears throat> depending on what part of because you know things change throughout like I like as I saw things were or weren't working I changed them just to make sure that I was creating ample opportunity for the kids to see each other even remotely so you know I introduced read aloud and then that became an everyday thing pretty much from like May until the end of June and we read the book that we were reading in class I borrowed it digitally and I read it to them every day I recorded it for the kids who didn't attend and I would have like those everyday attendance kids 
who would be there for every part of the story. And, and that was great. And then you're building community that way and you're building, you know, community around books, which is one of my favorite things to do in the classroom. But then, you know, when morning meetings started to lax, then I would invite special area teachers in and we would have guests for morning meeting. And then we started having like, when that started, not in it, like just in general, I just gave, you know, some of the kids didn't want to be there for morning meeting, you know, they didn't feel the need. Um, and the expectation was, you know, just check on them, make sure they're doing the work. And if they're doing the work, it counts, you know, so that's, that's, they're present, right? Like they're participating, they're present. Um, but these kids were little, they needed to be able to, you know, connect with one another. And like I said, you know, a lot, of, like some of them told me that they were not literally not allowed to leave their house to go for a walk. And when I heard about that, I was just like, then these kids need to connect every day and I need to provide those opportunities. So then I started having like on days when I wasn't doing morning meeting, um, I would have, or no, every day, every day I started having like, um, like just a random conversation. And so one day we did DC versus Marvel. Another day we talked about Harry Potter, which turned into a whole conversation about the hero's journey. We talked about Star Wars. Um, whatever topic they came up with, one of the topics they wanted to talk about was math. I was like, I don't know what you guys want to talk about. Like, that's not really yeah, a topic. Math. I'm like, what? So, so we ended up, honestly, we ended up doing a number talk and it was one of my favorite days because it was one of the days where I actually felt like I was teaching them because that was the other thing. Like we were told no, no, like teaching. You can teach into kids if they're having difficulty, but we weren't allowed to like teach a math lesson or we weren't, because not everybody had, um, like in fifth grade, yes, everybody has a Chromebook. So they had access to technology and the ability to participate, but not everybody had that. So I think that they were worried about equity and, and all of that. So it was just very, very different depending on who your teacher was last year. So it's kind of interesting because, um, you know, my co-teacher and I have been teaching into some of the virtual, um, virtual versus um, in-person expectations. And when you're in school, the expectations are not very different, right? Like you're socially distanced, that's new, but like you're there, you learn, right? And if you kind of check out mentally, we draw you back because we can see it. But like the for our kids who are Zooming, our Zoomers, like they don't necessarily always have to have their camera on. And even when they have their camera on, like, some of them are literally showing us how distracted they are, you know, by their household or whatever, the kids who come late. So we had this whole conversation and a lot of, a lot of um, last year's behaviors and last year's expectations from previous teachers came out. And that was really kind of eye opening as well. Um, because not everyone did everything the same. And again, like you're saying, what were the expectations? I mean, there's just checking in, making sure kids are participating and that they're they're okay. But I don't know. It yeah. So I'll be honest for me, I, I this this whole experience has been extremely weird and awkward for me. Right? Like obviously my role has changed from teacher to administrator and I've had no connection really with kids besides my own for quite some time. Um, uh, you know, from, from March until June, I would try to pop into a couple of classes here and there, but you know, I didn't really want to go uninvited and you know, I didn't want to just pop into a class. I didn't want teachers to think it was observation or anything like that. So I kind of, I kind of laid low this year. I saw a couple of the elementary kids as I was at the beginning, uh, at the building at the beginning of the year and, and welcoming them and saying hello. But like, again, they don't really know who I am. You know, they've seen me before, but they don't know who I am, you know, but it's been incredibly difficult for me because why do we get into this profession? We did it for the students. Yeah. And, and I feel like at this point, I, I, if it was my classroom, I feel like I'd be thriving. And Stacey, a lot of the things you're talking about really sounds like some cool things to do with students to get them just thinking about other things than, than, than school, having those different conversations and opening up to each other. I mean, you know, hopefully other teachers are doing that. I, I, I know you know, you're talking about connecting. We still have to connect with our students now because if we mm -hmm. just dive into content, if you're in a remote situation, you've lost the kids. You yeah. know, they're already sitting at home. They're already, you know, focused on other things going on around them. To just jump into content, you, you're you're not doing the right thing. So, for me, like I've I've seriously missed kids, and uh, I don't know. I, I 
probably not for another month will I see a student in my building. And it's very strange to me because I know the kids are coming back, but they're not there. And I walk around the building every day and I see, I see teachers. Some teachers can be home. Some teachers are allowed to be in the building if they so choose, but there's been no students. The only students I see really are my own children. You know, when I pick up, pick them up from school or drop them off, I see kids going into a building. So I know that's a good thing, but I've had no connections to kids and uh, I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to connecting with kids shortly. Yeah. And that so was actually one of the reasons that I was really excited to do the PA announcing because I knew that I would get the opportunity to see some kids. And actually th this past week, once I knew I was going to do, I did girls soccer and boys soccer on Thursday and I did the football game Friday. So I, in my Google meets all through the week, I said, Oh, you know, these two sporting events are happening. Sports is starting up. If you know upperclassmen or, you know, you want to start to try to get involved being freshmen and get involved in the school, you know, come out. You got to socially distance. You got to wear a mask when you come to the games. Um, but do that. And I said, bonus, I'm going to be there. I'm the voice of the zebras. If you want to meet me in person, you know, come knock on the press box door. I'll be happy to say hello to you six feet apart. And I had one kid who showed up on Thursday night during the boys soccer game, knocked on the, the door during between halves he's like are you mr nessie and i was like yeah who are you because i only see these kids avatars right. he yeah. goes oh, i'm so and so i'm in your your block three four class i was like oh my god and you know it's so nice to meet you and you know a you know, little elbow bump and he said to me he's like mr nessie you are taller than i expected <laughs> <laughs> and i'm about a five eleven and a half but you know what you see now on this screen for for this this is what I look like in class. So you really don't get a sense of how tall or short I am. But he was like, it was just, it was just really cool. And I saw a former students, a couple nice. who haven't seen me, you know, with, with the new hair or less of it. were like, they're like, yo, Mr. Nessie, you finally shaved yet. Good for you, Mr. Nessie. <laughs> so it was really cool. That's awesome. But again, I, you know, I haven't gotten to see kids. I'm, I'm with AJ. I see my own kids. I love mm -hmm. my kids. But those are the only students I see on an everyday basis. Yeah. It's the so that's that's interesting because I do see kids, and I have to say, like when, like over the summer, um, a lot of our PD was virtual, virtual, virtual. Like, like what you're going to do as a virtual teacher, and when we and we didn't know, we didn't know what we were going to be doing, what our assignment was going to be until the Thursday before schools before we reported, or the Tuesday what? before we reported. Stacey, um, when you say assignment, that means to find out like grade level roster. No, no, no. Like Hybrid that. versus uh, virtual. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So no, we knew what grade we were teaching. So I knew I was teaching fifth, but it, we, I didn't know if I would have real kids, like real kids or virtual kids. I know it sounds really silly, but like <laughs> if I was teaching hybrid um, and I really wasn't sure how I felt about hybrid like at first I was super nervous, but I kept saying all summer, like, I just want to meet my kids. If I can meet my kids in person. I can't like the year will be fine because there's something about like your kids seeing you, your kids interacting with you. You know, we take mass breaks during snack and I try to eat snack with them. Um, if I'm not doing a read aloud. So when your mask comes off, like at least they get to see like your whole face. It's not just on camera. They get to see like the nuances and the idiosyncrasies of like, I don't know, my Elvis lip, my like smirks. I don't know. Just, it's like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right. I have a dimple that nobody ever really gets to see. And, and like, that's, I don't know, for me, that was the most important thing was meeting my children. And no matter what happens now, I will have met all of them, uh, you know, and, and that's to me was super important. And I don't know if, how it feels to just like know your kids through a screen and, or not, or like you, AJ, not see kids at all. It is kind of, I will, I will be perfectly honest with you. It is really weird to be out on the playground during our break, which is like for fifth grade, it's all at the same time and only see what looks like a class or two out there and know that you're literally out there with all five sections of fifth grade that are hybrid because there are only five sections. And to know that like on any given day, there are no more than 150 kids in the building kind of kind of strange um but it for me just having met my kids and being able to like smile with them kind of get up close six feet apart and just be like hey 
um, for them to hear, you know, hear my real voice, see that I'm like the shortest person that they're ever going to meet who's a teacher. You know, that's important. Because <laughs> someone did tell me they thought I would be taller in real life when they met me. Ellen Deem. Yep. She told me, she was like, I thought you were going to be taller. I was like, based on what? <laughs> five you one. carry yourself at about five, five nine. three. <laughs> five one. <laughs> I'm five one. Oh, okay. Uh, Chris, I got a question that came in. I'm going to, before we go on to the next topic. So, uh, go ahead because we do have a call, but again, what's the question? We have a caller. Yeah. Whoa. All right. Here's a question. So from uh, Dave Frangiosa, a uh, friend of the podcast, uh, Dave asks, uh, your grading policies, uh, in college, uh, this is what he wrote to me. He said, a lot of students felt that if they were doing it for points, there was no point. And they said for him, it led to a lot of the disconnect between him and his colleagues, uh, when they were focused and engaged with the learning and not the points, engagement was way higher. So I see you have Dave's question up on the screen. So can you go through your grading policies between the high school and the college? So my grading policies, it, the, the approach is a little different. When, when I talk to students at the college level about grades, I tell them, do the work, do it well. If you are invested in yourself, and you're doing the work to make yourself better, your grade will take care of itself. I tell them, I don't care about the grades and you shouldn't care about them either. I said, you will get grades, but if you're gonna, and basically I try to prevent conversations like, why did I get this grade? Why did I, like, I don't wanna deal with that crap. Not at the college level, okay? You know, so it's about doing the work for you to improve. You chose your major, you choose to be here, it's on you. Yeah, in the end, you will get a grade. But if that's your main objective is to get an A, then you are missing the whole point of the class. So that's my approach with grades, college level. High school level, I still try to avoid conversations of why did I get this grade? Wah, give me more points and all that, that stuff. I, I just don't enjoy those conversations. But even still at the high school level, I want them to focus on still age appropriate invest in yourself, get better. Yes. You know, 10% of your grade is participation. 60% of your grade is assessment. 30% is classwork. But if you do the work and you do your best on it, yeah, you get a grade. So I guess really there's no difference because I mean, but that's just my approach. Cause it's not about the grade, especially in, in social studies, because there's no standardized test I'm preparing them for. You know, there's, again, I don't do tests and quizzes. I don't do traditional homework because that's not what the world throws at you when you're living your life. Okay. There are very few multiple choice tests you take in life that aren't for a class. All right. So it, I don't focus on the grades. I focus on self-improvement, getting better. Again, what are the verbs of my classroom? Create, communicate, collaborate, and critical think. You'll do everything I ask you to do. You're going to get better at those four things and you'll get a good grade. Simple. Thank you. Oh my goodness. That's so simple. <laughs> Thanks, AJ. Uh, let's turn our attention to the phones. We're going to go to Steph. Hello. Good evening, Steph. Hello. How are you? <laughs> how are you? Good evening. Dinner. I jumped in from YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> welcome. Welcome. So, but uh, Stacy was talking about um, not about elementary in person, and I'm doing all virtual elementary in person. So I thought I'd come on and share what that's been like a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it's been better than I thought with uh, connecting to the students virtually. Um, I'm in a really unique situation right now. One of our virtual teachers um, was exposed to COVID and has been home. So I have been taking over her class just because of her situation at the house. Um, so I was really nervous just because I had met those students. This is the first, last week was the first week they got to see me and interact with me. Um, but they're, they're doing pretty well. It's, um, they love showing us stuff like they did in the spring at home. And it's just really neat to see some of the things they'll go run and grab. And that's been interesting, but it's, it's, it's tough. Cause I miss all of those like little side conversations in the classroom, like coming in or like, switching materials like oh 
And even some of that does not feel the same. I'll be honest with you. My kids come in in the morning and there's very, like, aside from saying good morning, they just kind of sit and wait. Mm -hmm. Um, There's not the hustle and bustle of, like, turning in a note from home or, you know, unpacking and bringing your things to the closet. Those things, like, we don't use the closet anymore. Very few of them have notes from home because there's so little change in, like, what's going on throughout the day. Um, so it's it's kind of interesting. It's nice to see them at the end during dismissal when they do like kind of break out. Like, and each of my weeks is very different. Like those kids, um, my week one kids are definitely a little quieter, more demure, lower affect. And my week two kids, they're the ones that were with us last week. They are just like free spirited, very like open with one another. They'll yell across the room, which is kind of just like, oh, this feels right. A little bit. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, Stacey, since you say that, you to refresh people's memories, you see a group of kids per week. So you've got two groups of students. And I'm teaching ha- synchronously. And so you're I'm teaching, teaching synchronously. Yeah. Have you had any time to imagine what the two groups would be together when you get to be in the same room at the same time? I did about that, that this week. It was really funny because I was like, you know what? I can't wait until these kids are all together because it will be like one really nice magical class. And like there are certain like week one kids that I think would really gel well with the week two kids. And like I could see friendships blossoming. And it's funny because my co-teacher even said something like, oh, she'd get along really well with so-and-so. And I was like, well, the good thing is they're writing partners. So like, I like the fact that like we are teaching them synchronously because that was not the original plan. The original plan was that when they were virtual, they were with a completely different teacher. Mm. Um, And like, I feel like that creates barriers where like there really are two separate classes in one homeroom. Um, You know, one of the things that we're trying to do too is, you know, make sure that we have a normal day. Morning meeting has gotten really long and out of hand. So we did separate between um, rumors and zoomers, right? So our virtual kids would be out in the hallway with one of, with either my co-teacher or myself, and then our our rumors would stay inside, and we would have our separate morning meeting. And I realized, like every time we do that, I have no idea what's going on, and that's okay. We do need to separate and split up, but I think that, yeah, I think that we need to um, we need to combine the rumors and zoomers, and like I think tomorrow I'm gonna suggest that we have morning meeting online completely and just have like room A and room B and everyone will be a Zoomer. And we, I, I'm looking for a better name, but I, we did this earlier this week too, where like my, my in-person kids were on Zoom and they are on Zoom throughout the day because they are working in partnerships for math or for writing or whatever. Um, and I called them tumors and I hate that word, but in my head I was like, it's not a tumor from kindergarten cop. <laughs> <laughs> you can't call them I know words. I was yeah. so I need a better word for when like they're in both worlds and it's got to rhyme it's got to be like rumor zoomer and what so help me out gentlemen yeah and wait, are, you're looking for a name when they're what when they're in the room but also uh-huh. in zoom that's why I call them tumors they're in both places too huh. Steph what do you think I have no idea. That's huh. All right. Well, if you have ideas, Stacy is at Stacy Lindis on Twitter. Yeah. Maybe they could be at Kaboomers. I don't know. Or at not at Kaboomers, but Kaboomers in both worlds. I don't know. So Steph, how are you connecting both like your the class that you're taking care of that's not your homeroom, um, as well as your own homeroom. What's that like? So I haven't connected with what was my homeroom. I'm like an in-class support teacher. So it's just okay. kind of going where needed and in a room to support um, just a, uh, mainly a few students and then whoever else would need help that needs it. Um, but I haven't been in that room for all last week. because I've been just in the room with the one I'm helping out, but just trying to let them like share more and asking questions in the beginning of the day, um, like get to know you type questions and have a couple of friends share. Are you responsible for that lesson planning or like, what does that look like? I'm not. The teachers have been taking care of that and the school I'm at, they team plan. So everybody plans for like one or two subjects. Yeah. That's what we're doing as well. 
but they've been great sharing with me, like checking in. Do you need help? Do you need anything today? That's fantastic. They've been great. Yeah, my sister, um, I was sharing at the top. Um, my sister is also a teacher. And she shared with me that if anything happens and she ends up, and she's also hybrid. So she sees her students um, and she's teaching synchronously as well. First grade, mind you, I can't even, I've taught first grade. I cannot imagine teaching first grade mm -hmm. in this setting with a synchronous setup. But she told me that um, if, if something happens and she can't report to school, that the person who checks in, all of her kids, I forget what happens to her in-person kids, but her kids will be checked in on by the fifth grade band teacher <laughs> just like oh that's, that's a, it's, it's very sentence. different yeah, but no. it's nice to know that there is a, a plan for that i was in first grade last year and it was tough online even just with a little bit mm -hmm. we were doing online school wise it was a challenge because they hadn't been used to any of the tech any of it yeah well i look at my own you know my my, my youngest son he's in kindergarten this year and, you know, we, we share this office space that we're in because my big guy can work by himself. But when I hear him on his Google meets with his teacher, it, 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 it's a throwback for me. It's like watching an episode of Romper Room because of how engaging his kindergarten teacher is and how she interacts. And he's all virtual. So his whole class is all virtual and they're in, in Google meets. And it's like watching one of these like Nick Jr. Disney Jr. shows where they're like talking to you and then they got to respond to the screen. So his teacher is doing a really nice job. And I know that so many other teachers are working extremely hard to engage with their students. You know, if, if I bring it back to what I'm trying to do at the high school level, Stacy, you talked about like getting them to talk about random things. That's my do now approach. Yeah. You know, I have, I don't know if I told you guys, I do a welcoming slide that I put up on the screen. It's not a Bitmoji classroom. Thank God. We know, we know how I feel about those. So it's a slide that I present into the Google Classroom. So when the kids come in, it's up there. It's, it's what the objective is, a couple of announcements, and I have a spot for the do now. And the do now, I'm literally just going out to Google and finding, I search random questions to start conversations with people. And then I find appropriate ones that I can use in school. You know, I asked the kids one day, if you could visit any planet, what would you visit? Type your thoughts in the chat. Oh, uh, I like that. I'm, I'm, I did another uh, one that was like, like, would you rather? Oh, I'm and doing was, that tomorrow. So the, the, <laughs> those are fun. The question I picked was, would you rather, um, what was it? Would you rather have something green stuck in your teeth or live perpetually with a stuffy nose? Mine is, would you rather <laughs> brush your teeth with soap or drink sour milk? Ew. Oh, God. <laughs> I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited. Oh, my God, that's disgusting. Yeah, right? sure. It's that's absolutely crazy. disgusting. And actually, yeah. you know, you could probably even get kids to submit questions. Mm hmm I yeah. would not ask my students to do that, though. And we do. Um, but that's, I think, like, that's why morning meeting to me is still such an important part of the day. And finding, like, like this week, I really want to find a way for my kids uh, my roomers and Zoomers to connect with each other because right now it really has been separate where like the Zoomers are having their own morning meeting with one of us, one of us. And then the, um, our roomers are having their morning meeting with one of us. And it's just been kind of like, I don't know. I know they're missing out, you know? So. Yeah. But morning meeting is fun. We're <laughs> using Jamboard to do, um, what is it? Wednesday? No, Wednesday. And um, that's been kind of interesting. Like I draw like half a picture, half a, I drew half an apple and then you write like, it's not an apple. It's a, and then they get to draw the rest of it and then talk about what it is. And that's when morning meeting gets really long, which is hard because some of my kids have to go on to other teachers. They don't stay in our homeroom for reading. So I don't know, but that sounds like fun though. I think it's definitely something that, uh, you know, it could be used in a lot of other classes, not just the elementary classroom when they... Yeah. Because morning meeting is Pick really just get the started, right? Just get the day started to get everybody mm -hmm. focused in the right spot. Yeah. It, morning meeting starts with um, with a greeting, which has that's really where the challenge has been is like making sure you're greeting. And I have extra kids in my morning meeting because I were, I'm working with a, another special ed teacher. Mm -hmm. So 
you know, it's not just my 21, it's like 25 plus like four adults. And so like getting everyone greeted has been really long and then making sure everyone gets the opportunity to share. So um, I think pretty soon we're going, we're going to be moving to what I, what I, I typically have is like a sharing schedule where like, you know, two or three people each day share. And then that makes it a lot easier as well. It will shorten things up nicely. And then there's a, an activity, which tomorrow will be, what would you rather? And then um, the news and announcements, which is just the morning message. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you. Steph, thank anything you. else to share with us? No, I really thought I'd hop in finally. <laughs> No, stay in though, and you know, keep adding to the conversation. Chris, what are you going to say? I cut you off. Well, I was going to say that uh, I was going to ask: Have you had back to school night yet, Stacy? I did, and that was like also very trippy because it was in this room. Chris, you'll be so proud of me. I should send you the video. I um, my neighbor is like a like an influencer and a beach body coach and stuff. So she has like a ring light and I borrowed her ring light. I changed my setup. So I was behind a different part of like, I was in front of a different part of my shelf in my living room, but it, it looked good. Like aesthetically, it looks really nice with the light. And, <laughs> and now it's Sunday and we're back to real life. I'll just have to imagine. <laughs> yeah, No, um, I'll send, I'll send you the link to my video. Nice. Mine was interesting. So we, we had a set of <clears throat> Google meets and, parents were welcome to go through their students schedule you know Ugh. 10 to 12 minutes over like an hour and a half last wednesday evening and mine was kind of like this but a google meet where i was like playing music from spotify into the you know google meet and i did that <laughs> i had i had some i had one father come on and go excuse me mr nessie i said yes sir he goes i have a question i said yes sir he said do you take requests <laughs> i said <laughs> I said, sure. What do you, I said, go ahead, call here on the air. What do you want to hear tonight? And he asked for something from the Rolling Stones. And then another I love it. mother jumped in. She's like, oh, could you play you know, this song from the Rolling Stones? So I'm playing Rolling Stones. And my principal jumps in the Google Meet at that time. And he goes, I could see him bopping his head. He's like, Mr. Nessie, I came in here to thank you for helping do the admin <laughs> part of Back to School Night. But I just want to tell you, this has been the best meeting I've jumped into so far you guys are having fun and, and awesome. then he stayed and he was interacting with some of the families and he was just enjoying the music and we were just having, I mean, having a good time. I, I also do the same thing at the start of my classes now, which Same. something I did translate from my physical classroom playing like chill hop and, you know, other types of music. I just stream it into the Google meet from Spotify school yep. appropriate stuff. Um, I play pop goes classical and then it's like no lyrics. I'm playing hits from TikTok. I'm finding other school safe, safe stuff. And then I I also have a class playlist. And I'm looking for Savage Love that does not have curse words on Spotify, and I cannot find it. <laughs> I will. I like, I'm good I like at finding radio edits. I'll get you a radio Yeah, edit find me the radio edit and then send it to me. Because that's yeah, I what, like, like um, I, I let the kids pick their favorite song, and I make that playlist. So. Tomorrow, Stacey... We, Yell into your Google Meet, chicken wing, chicken wing, hot dog and bologna. See if they yell something back. What? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Steph knows what I'm talking about. Chicken <laughs> wing, chicken <laughs> wing, hot dog yeah. and bologna, chicken and macaroni, chilling with my home. It's a whole song. Look oh, it up. What, what is happening? <laughs> I don't know, AJ. I feel what like you happening? and I are like. I, have n <laughs> <laughs> I did know Savage Love, but. <laughs> Jeez. I feel like none of that has to do anything with what we were talking about. I was actually <laughs> thinking the same thing. I was zoning out for a second. Then Chris started singing. Did you find you TikTok. You, you find a way to bring TikTok into everything. Everything. You need, man, you're worse than Gary V. TikTok. Oh you ruin. It's ruining your brain. Chicken oh. wing. What am I saying? Chicken wing. What? Chicken wing. Yeah, chicken wing. Hot dog bologna. and bologna. Right. Chicken and macaroni chilling with my homie look it Just up steph knows what i'm talking about i don't have tiktok i uh, flat out refuse so why are you asking you know you know, hold on speaking of because TikTok, my kids will a, know it got a great message on instagram i got from tagged danny in a from, from danny who was i like, didn't know what tt was know, for a second tiktok why did none of my friends tell me how awesome tiktok was except at cj nessie should have listened 
Just saying. Yeah. I'm sorry. This can be another conversation for another episode. I still don't see value. Okay. So he's throwing <laughs> pens. All right. Hold this on. Is, before wait, we, AJ, before this we is like when we talk about sports and I'm like, I don't know what's happening right now. <laughs> um, real quick, because she's here, um, Steph, you're one of our executive producers and we want to say Woo-hoo. thank you face to face. So thank you for supporting the podcast. Thank, thank you, you for creating such good content. <laughs> Aww. Wow, your mug and your shirt are on the way. You should have gotten a sticker by now. I did. I was very excited. After. I debated delivering it myself, but I didn't know if that would be too creepy. <laughs> The answer is yes, <laughs> because yeah. we don't live that far apart. And I was like, I could just take, I could save the stamp. Yeah. Ah, just yeah. yes. I don't yeah. Hey, the USPS needs all the money it can get. Support, support them. Yes, yes. Support your local post office. Which, when did we ever think we'd have to say that? <laughs> um, but speaking of executive producers, one Steph is one, and thank you so much to Steph. But uh, do you all know what that means? Did you know? that you can support Podcast PD. <laughs> you can support this show on a monthly or a yearly basis. You can donate either $5 a month, or we would gladly accept $50 for a year of support. As a thank you, every executive producer will receive a Podcast PD sticker, and yearly supporters will get a mug and a t-shirt that's a Podcast PD, not just a random mug and random t-shirt. If you'd like to become an awesome executive producer of this podcast go to podcastpd.com slash executive producer and we want to shout out our current eps adam kelly mike brilla sandy hartman and the steph scrocky <laughs> thank you steph anytime yay so how are we going to put a bow on this conversation before we talk about podcasts um you know i i think we really just need to um continue to look for ways to innovate connection making and connection building with our kids, right? Like we, it can't be the same morning meeting games. It can't be um, the same thing. Like it, it, like I noticed in the spring that, especially for my virtual kids, that too much of the sameness just felt like Groundhog's Day. And like, you really have to like look for some it's novelty out there every day. Right. And you have to look for the novelty. Like they're young. Their attention span is limited. I I don't care how old you are. I, you know, like, look, I'll have a moment of like some truth, like virtual faculty meetings and PLCs have been very difficult for me. And so I can't imagine for a kid what it is like to be online all day long. And I think that the connection building is what helps them feel that they are important And then in turn makes you an important part of their day, you know, and the content that you're delivering should be important, like will feel more important to them and make your content engaging and connect your content to them in real ways as well. And I know you do that, Chris, as a social studies teacher, um, you know, and, and I try to instill that in them throughout the day, but we we have to make it novel it cannot be the same old same old because it's 2020 and 2021 are just going to be very different for them i i agree and the way i interpret that is don't stop trying yes find what sticks and then find ways to kind of reshape it treat it like play-doh whatever just you, you can't give up and i think a lot of teachers felt very defeated in the spring. And I'll be honest, there have been moments even this fall that I have felt defeated. You know, I am really thankful that in my Google meets that I have to do that. I have my in-class support teacher for, you know, two of them. So there is another person that I can hear their voice. They turn their camera on. I mean, if I, and this is the reality teaching high school students, if I see a kid on camera, it's an accident because their camera came on and they didn't want it on, know it was on, you know, funny thing happened, you know, this week, I forget how it happened in the chat of my Google meet, but a kid wound up like eating five jalapeno peppers and then turned his camera on to show us him drinking milk because he'd like burned his mouth eating five jalapeno peppers to which I said to this poor young fellow, I said, you know, you're going to learn the question that day was, what have you tried that you will never, ever, ever try again? (laughs) That. (laughs) And I said, you're going to learn two lessons there, buddy. One, not to do jalapeno peppers and not to drink that much milk that quickly because you're going to pay for that one in about 45 minutes. 
<laughs> I said, and then I was like, and it's going to burn either way. I don't even know. Yeah. Well, you can't drink, like if you drink a gallon of milk in a very short amount of time, you're going to be throwing up. Like it's, it's coming back. I'm going to throw up if like, I drink any milk. I don't drink milk. It's gross. I love milk. <laughs> I would brush my teeth with soap before I had sour milk. Just want to put that out there. Oh, God. Yep. Sour milk? You'd have sour point. milk? Um, What kind of soap? <laughs> it does not matter. Uh, yeah, I'd rather go with the soap. Ralphie's soap. Oh, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> whole bar the whole thing all right so we have a podcast recommendation for you as we do every episode and if you are new to the program and you've listened to some older episodes you'll be like wait a second they're not all giving us a podcast recommendation well we used to give a recommendation from all of us and now we've cut down to one recommendation. We call that Stacy syndrome because some people subscribe to too many Every podcasts. And actually, before we get to that, Stacy, what's your number? How many unlistened to episodes are on your phone? 2,304. I'm sorry. Say that again. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a lot more than it was the last time we asked. <laughs> 2,304. Oh my goodness. That's a lot of podcasts. Yeah. So I, I've got a problem. I really need to yes. just. Yes, you do. Hi, Stacey. <laughs> <laughs> I really need to just go through and get rid of the ones that I'm never going to listen to again. Like I, like I have not listened to how I built this since like early summer, late spring. Um, All right. I think we should commit to now, AJ, let me know what you think. And Steph, since you're an executive producer, let us know if you clear this idea for a future episode. <laughs> Uh, episode 88 coming to you at the end of November. We're going to cure Stacy of what ails her in terms of podcast subscriptions. What is it? An episode just going right through the podcast and say yes or no. Yeah. Like it or spike it. We'll, <laughs> we, we decide if she can keep it or she has to delete it. Oh. Um, I also have Stacy syndrome. So. Oh boy. Oh, Yay! hi Steph. This is why we only have one recommendation now, Steph, because it's real. <laughs> because of it. Steph, yeah. what's your number? How many unlistened two episodes do you have on your phone? Uh, well, on my phone, um, 2,278. Oh. Wait, she just said on her phone. That means she's got like other I devices. Know, I she finds other podcast name. episodes. Where are the other podcasts, Stephanie? They're on the phone that crashed last year because they were, I couldn't get the rest onto overdraft. I was like, oh, I might want to listen to those one day. And they're still there. Uh, I'll play. I'll play this game. So if I'm an overcast, Chris, how do I how do I find the uh, put your badge on? Yeah, how do I get the badge? Well, if you go to you, your settings, settings. Yeah. But but AJ doesn't download them. He streams. I don't download. Everything. I stream. I stream. Oh, uh, if I can come up with anything, right? It probably won't because it's in like the right. nitpicky details. If you go to like your settings and then nitpicky details, you can. Mm -hmm. That's when you turn on the um, icon badge number, which I love. It says show the number of unfinished episodes on overcast. I an overcast icon to add stress to your life. I love that. That was great. It's like my favorite. Thing. I almost wish though, like the one thing I wish overcast did was like actually put a badge number on each show so that like I knew how many, how I built this I had or how many like, ga uh, you know, gangster capital is I had or hidden brains. Tim Cavey rooting for Stacy to Tim Cavey. Hold on, that doesn't no! sound yes. here, alcoholic. Have a drink. No, no, no. I'm with him. It's true. This is like a punishment at this point. <laughs> if you're gonna do it, you better just do it. Do it right. Just keep going. Just lean into it. Just, that's exactly it. Lean in. But if Thanks, I knew, Tim. like some of these are just single epi like single episodes, so that like, like I have like, hold on, let me find it. Like I have Lavar Burton reads. Because I really liked reading Rainbow, but I only have one episode because eventually I might listen to it. It's like a placeholder. How long is the like, episode? It's 45 minutes. But it's from where January when it first came minutes. out. What's that? I said, where are you going to find 45 minutes? I have a long commute. I have a 40 minute commute. Well, oh, I cut it down to 30. I go a new way now oh, where I can you? speed a lot. <laughs> Podcast PD doesn't condone speeding. No. Not unless you're using Waze and it has a little cop thing on it. 
the nope, little still, cops. Still, still shouldn't be speeding. <laughs> still Maybe still not. shouldn't be speeding, Stacy. Yeah. Well, oh. Like right yeah, now, I have like a... probably fifty life kits. I don't need them all. That's gonna be a fun game to see how long. What do we think? How long will it take Stacy to get to three K? Because you know it's going to happen. Because oh, it'll happen by it'll happen by the end of um, November. End of she November. Will be at three K. When we ask her at the start of episode eighty eight, <clears throat> when we do this, she'll be over three thousand. Yep. You think so? Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow, oh okay. yeah. Yeah. Especially because like I've been listening to a lot more books as well. You always say that. I know. There's, there's always a reason. You always say, I'm listening to more books. And that's the reason. It's just one book. <laughs> See, look, Tim wrote, Stacy's podcast download addiction is like my book buying addiction. I need to finish the last before I order more. All right. Well, are you saying I need that I need to finish all of my... You can't be double fisting your podcast, Stacy. Well, all right. So I can no longer <laughs> add any of your recommendations... Until I finish what, Tin? You tell me. <laughs> there's, I don't know, there's a lot on here. Oh, and there's well, like some 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 podcasts that just ended forever. I, I guarantee there's podcasts on there that no longer are podcasts. I guarantee. No, they're, but they're they don't inactive. they don't take up they're they're not a badge number, but there's like you know, I listen to a podcast called The Wilderness. I leave it on there just because maybe that's, I mean, that's how I knew um, to listen to Nice White Parents because it came through my serial stream. You know, I'm going to forego my recommendation, Stacy. Tell us about the wilderness. <laughs> it's a little political. Um, now, I'd prefer not to talk about the wilderness. I mean, I can tell you. About, all right. No, I no, because it's it's too political. By you listening to it. No, the content is too political. Oh, fair enough. All right. Well, we've, we've plugged it enough. People can go look. You, yeah. G-O-O-G-L-E, the Wilderness Podcast. There you go. But, like, I keep Sandra on here because I'm super hopeful that Gimlet will, like, pick up that <laughs> that one. That was a really good one. <laughs> All, All right. right. I'll give my so recommendation then. Okay. Go ahead. No, they should listen to Sandra. I think I actually had this as a recommendation. Helen's always dreamed of ditching her hometown, so when she lands a job at the company that makes Sandra everyone's favorite AI, she figures it's the next best thing. But working behind the curtain isn't quite the escape from reality that Helen expected. Sandra stars Kristen Wiig, Aaliyah Shawquat, and Christopher Abbott, and all these other people. Um, it was really interesting because it was it was kind of like Alexa. Like, she was she was the voice of Alexa and there were other people who were the voice of this thing called Sandra. And I was really hoping it would come back because it's, it talked about like how it started taking over her life. And like, it was very much um, like the circle. If you ever read that book, which was amazing. Um, On behalf of podcast PD, we're sorry that Stacy just set off your Amazon devices. You're welcome. But Sandra, yeah, <laughs> Sandra was was really good and I was hoping that Gimlet would come back with more but you know what maybe it's on um, is Gimlet still producing outside of Spotify um, typically once Spotify sucks you up that's it until you're like you leave all right so then I would have to find it on Spotify is that what you're telling me maybe that's why I haven't heard yeah. anymore from Sandra yeah Boo. yeah all right <clears throat> I'll, I'll save my actual recommendation for next episode. Check out Sandra. <laughs> Check out Sandra. There you go. It's like a good departure from reality. I think right now some of us could use that. A little bit. <laughs> There's just so much going on. You pick the reality you're trying to depart from. I, yeah. Anyway, it's time. Yes. It's time. It's, it's time. time. It's time. All right. It is time for us to bid adieu. So say good night, AJ. Good night, AJ. Say good night, Christopher. Good night, Christopher. Say good night, Steph. Good night. Good night, Podcast PD. Ah, there's my edit point. And the following audio will not Bye, appear Tim. in the official episode. Peace out, Tim. Thanks for joining, Tim. Thanks to everybody.
yes. who uh, came out in the uh, the chat tonight. Steph, thanks for popping on. Dave, thanks for popping in. Dan, Any questions? thanks for jumping in for a little bit in the chat yeah. room there. Back there. Yeah. Nice. So we will be back uh, for, for people in the uh, in the chat. We'll be back on uh, Sunday, October 18th. And we're going to continue this conversation, but we're going to talk about connecting with families, which certainly poses challenges. And there are some things we can talk about. And then uh, again, episode 87 will be on Sunday, November 1st. We are that far ahead in the planning, folks. Crazy. Uh, Sunday, November 1st, we're going to talk about connecting with colleagues. So, you know, those adults you used to talk to at work. How are we doing yeah. that? And then two weeks later, we'll talk we're about that in a month. Podcast. And then episode 88. We're rating like Stacey Lindis edition. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to end this. We can talk to Steph privately for a second. <laughs>